Welcome everyone. Welcome to my home, to my kitchen, to my heart. I am so happy and blessed today. We're gonna have so much fun. I am reunited with friends who I haven't seen in years. Always a joy to have my friend Jerry here. The new lady in his life, Wendy. Hopefully the last one for quite a while. <laughs> a little tired of the shit. <laughs> I have a wonderful lady to my far right, Marchette, who has been my social media guru. She's the one who's gonna make me famous. Uh, and the person who's brought more joy to my life than any man deserves, my bride back there. And then that handsome son of a gun behind the camera, Kevin. Um, we, we've, we've been drinking champagne for the last hour or so, so we're, have, we're already well on our way here to having a good time. But there's a reason for it, a couple things. Uh, uh, one, we're celebrating the reuniting of some friends that uh, we've lost touch with, have been able to bring back into the fold. Um, the fact that our dear friend Jerry is celebrating a birthday tomorrow, which we'll acknowledge a little bit later. Um, also, very important, one year ago today, we actually filmed our promo episode. All right? We know that because it was Jerry's birthday then too. <laughs> and we drank champagne for that. So it's been one year since I've had the absolute privilege, privilege see I've been drinking, and joy to stand before you and cook uh, things that I enjoy cooking and most importantly, share my love of cooking it uh, with you. Today we're gonna make piadina dough and piadina bread. Piadina is an Italian flatbread. Uh, Indians have their naan, the Latinos have their flour tortillas, the Italians have piadina. You can't pass a gas station in Italy without running inside, dropping a six or seven euro and getting a piadina sandwich for the ride for your next stop. So real quick and easy, one and three quarter cups of double zero flour. You can use all-purpose flour, which is fine. I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of salt. That's about right. I'm gonna put in about a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. That's probably a little more than that, but that's okay. I'm gonna mix it up with the flour. I'm gonna create a well. And then I'm gonna pour in three and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. You could also use lard. The word lard kind of turns me off, so I'm using extra virgin olive oil. Gonna mop up my AC's not working well today. And we're gonna work this in. And we're gonna create sort of a lumpy, floury. Did I hit 10,000 steps already or somebody calling me? No, I hit 10,000 steps already. That's what happens when you start cooking at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> so we'll just incorporate this really nicely. Like I said, we'll get nice little pieces of dough. What you want to do in creating this is a nice, wet, moist dough. All right, I'll just incorporate that as much as you can with a simple fork. I've got a pan on the stove that's nice and hot. It's been blessed with a little olive oil there as well. All right, once that's done, you work your milk in. Very important that the milk isn't cold. I took this milk out about an hour ago. It's a little bit closer to room temperature. You can use warm milk, but as long as it's room temperature, when you work that in. All right. Again, with your fork, just work in, incorporate. You can see it kind of starting to come together. Move this out of here. I'm going to put that in like that. Give me some space. Thanks, baby. All right, once you've got something that looks like a consistency of a dough, you can go ahead and just sort of drop it onto your counter or a nice clean work surface. I need you in the picture. And get your hands busy. Make sure they're washed. Job done, I promise. And just start working the dough, just like any other kind of dough. Uh, as opposed to a pizza dough, which involves yeast and warm water and fermentation and all these other elements that rise. I'll show you pizza dough next time. My wife, I've, I've been told that my wife's buying me a pizza oven for, the, for Christmas. So when I get my pizza oven, oh, sorry. <laughs> so when I get my pizza oven, 
Well, now, you can, now you're stuck. Now, you've, now you have to, because I've, I've said it on TV. <laughs> it's been put out there. So that'll be a fun outdoor episode. We're coming back for that one, right? Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, and just like any other dough, just a lot of hand manipulation. I always like to work a little dirtiness into my conversations. Yeah, just have fun. <laughs> Uh, work it, work it, work it. Kevin, you might want to edit that out. That's up to you. There were so many spots. I try to create those opportunities. I really do. All right. So, yeah, a good, you know, five to ten minutes of some good kneading. And you've got a nice, moist, consistent, pretty ball of dough. Almost like pasta dough, except you know it's, it's a it, we use eggs. Uh, here you use a little milk and a lot. So once you've got that done, like any dough, you want to let it settle. Whether it's pasta dough, pizza dough, or in the case of pizza dough, you want to let it rise. Here you want the piadina dough to rest a good 30 minutes. Once it's rested for 30 minutes, what you're going to want to do is roll it into a log, separate it into four pieces, hopefully as equal as you can get it. Create four balls. Let the four balls rest. Again, careful what you think. <laughs> and then once you've done that, you'll take each ball. Here you go, honey, catch. And you'll roll it out. And what you'll do is you'll create some nice circles, just like this. Very pliable, very easy to stretch out. And then what you'll do next is you'll take your hot pan and you just drop it in. I did earlier, so yeah, there's just a touch of one as little as possible. And then you want to just play with it. You want to just sort of dance it around the, the pan a little bit. You know. And what you'll get is these wonderful little brown spots. You'll see some bubbling, which is a nice touch to the piadina. that cook. Takes about two minutes on each side. Doesn't take very long. And then while that's cooking, we're going to start. So, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with piadina. One of the things I like to do, you know, it's, it's just a matter of putting together your favorite sandwiches. One of my favorite sandwiches is prosciutto and mozzarella. So let's lay some layers of prosciutto and mozzarella. That could be a sandwich. Thanks. All right. Got some fresh mozzarella here. Thank you, Galbani. I, I have done that before. Uh, we did an episode where we made homemade ricotta cheese, but again, my dear friends of Galbani don't like when I do that. It takes, takes, away, takes away from their magnificence. I've uh, got some fresh basil here. It's not prosciutto mozzarella without fresh basil. I'll flip this over. And get some little brown spots there. Some fresh basil from the garden. Yeah, I've got I've got a huge herb garden outside, and then I have my little arrow garden that I use mainly just for garnishing plates. It's just perfect for that. All right, so that's one sandwich. Or maybe another sandwich people might like is mortadella. So we'll put some mortadella. So we'll do, we'll do a second one here. Mortadella, which is one of my favorite lunch meats in the whole world. You can't go to a breakfast buffet in Italy and not find mortadella on it. And maybe I like a little provolone cheese on there too. And maybe this is another sandwich I like. This again. I want to make the bubble. Um, I like a little arugula on my mozzarella. Oh, I just love arugula. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe another sandwich idea is some soppressata. How'd you say? Say a pretty close. 
So passata. They're very expressive Italians with uh, every vowel, every consonant, every syllable. So put it on it. I also like uh, Boar's Head. I hate to, you know, they're not a sponsor, but Boar's Head makes a wonderful rosemary sun-dried tomato ham that I get, and I like the way the flavors work with the soprasada. So I'm gonna put some of that on there. So those are three different sandwiches that I just think are absolutely wonderful. You know what? Let's spruce this up a little sliced tomato. Where did I put my tomato? Right there. Right there. <laughs> well, funny you should say that. <laughs> funny you should say that. That's why this is sitting on a cutting board, because Sometimes, there's, there are just times when you just can't decide which one you like, and those are the times when you just decide to have all three. Oh, no. So. Yeah. Move over seven like a cookie? Who? Well, I, I was gonna say, all I gotta do is put a couple of candles in here and we get your birthday cake. Holy, oh, look at it. Like an Italian dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need it now. Ah. All right. Oops. Now they die already. They can be a little brittle, but that's all right. Well, it doesn't take away from the joy of the taste. Uh, yeah, we could do that. That's always the hard part because it's hot. Uh, I'll come close. I'm going to have a few casual, one or two casualties, but that's okay. It's all gone, exactly. Uh, all right. And listen, we have a lot of fun plates here, but this just goes on a paper plate. You know, we'll just keep this real simple. Take it easy. There's one. There's another. You got it. Just start passing them out. Yeah, if you could. If you could plate and put them out, and I'll make a quick Aperol spritzer. We just finished on this. Just the best of all worlds as far as I'm concerned. Hey, and we're gonna make an Aperol spritzer next. This to me is the quintessential summertime cocktail. Great for lunchtime, no matter where you are, where you're having. Uh, it starts very simply with some Prosecco. Actually, I'm going to start with a little Aperol. No, I'm going to start with the Prosecco. All right, we're using our Gemma de Luna Prosecco. We want to use a good five or six ounces of Prosecco. We're going to hit it with about an ounce and a quarter of Aperol. It's, a, it's, it's sort of, a, it's like a lighter, softer version of Campari. It's made from uh, sort of a bitters type thing. And we're gonna just kind of give that a twirl. We're gonna finish it with a little club soda and garnish with an orange slice. And this again, this is an absolutely wonderful summer cocktail, a perfect complement with a, something like this. Imagine sitting on a beautiful patio in Verona with Lake Garda off to the side and you're having these wonderful Piadina sandwiches and washing them down with an Aperol spritzer. It's as simple as that. You guys dig in, don't, don't wait for me. Aperol spritzers are coming around for everybody, but be, feel free to enjoy your sandwich in the meantime. Um, we'll raise our glasses to all of you, to all of you out there watching, to all this incredible country of ours. Um, you know what, I'm gonna bring something up. I shouldn't, but I, I am. Uh, today happens to be September 11th, and um, uh, this is a country that obviously mourned. And I saw an amazing post on Facebook today and I, uh, that I don't typically see on Facebook. It's usually a lot of anger and crap. 9-11 uh, is a day that none of us ever want to relive. But if we can harken back to the America we were on 9-12, that's what we should all aspire to be. There wasn't a store. Get emotional. Cry. I'm crying. Don't you, don't, don't you shit your pants, Marty. 9-12 uh, was just an amazing day where uh, stores were sold out of flags and it didn't matter what your political beliefs were, what your religious beliefs were, what your sexual beliefs were. We were Americans first and foremost. And, so let us all pray that we never live through another 9-11, but let us also pray that we all find ourselves, uh, our America again as we were on 9-12. So, 
to our wonderful country, to all of you. God bless you all. I love you. See you next time at Fast for the Flavors. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.